Right now on Sunrise, more stores are back open in Minnesota. So how did it go on that first day? Well, we'll show you inside of malls and some local stores. As businesses reopen, we're seeing case numbers continue to rise in Minnesota. I'm tracking the trends. The pandemic derailed her senior year and left her disappointed and bored. We've waited for four years of high school and um, all of this is kind of taken away. But thanks to a movie camera and a pile of cloth, one student is turning her final semester into one she'll never forget. Stubborn clouds stick around today, warming up by the end of the week and our next chance for rain. It's Tuesday, May 19th. Here 11 Sunrise starts now. Good Tuesday morning, Sunrisers. This question right here, going viral this morning. A journalist in the UK asking people, what's the last photo taken on your phone before the pandemic? Our Sunrisers team sharing theirs, but we want to see yours. So write this number down, plug it into your phone. It's on the corner of your screen right there, 763-797-7215. Text your pictures to that number. We'll be sharing them in about 15 minutes. Ah, the memory. Speaking of picture perfect, hopefully we'll have some Instagram quality weather today. I always like to take a few <laughs> snaps when the weather's nice, Tracy. What do we have in store? A mix of sun and clouds, and I've heard some cloud cover is actually good for photo lighting. I'm not a photographer, but that's what I've heard. Now, if you are getting outside right now, it's right around 55 degrees here in the metro. To the north, a little cooler. Obviously, temperatures starting in the 30s. Now, we had some clouds starting to clear just out from the backyard. A lot of those clouds are pushing south, but we're going to continue to have moisture from that system that impacted us over the weekend. So we still will have some on and off cloud cover here throughout the day with a few pockets of sunshine. Warming up, though, expecting to get to 70 degrees, and that warming trend continues for the rest of the week. Sounds good. Thanks for that, Tracy. Many stores are back open in Minnesota from malls to local shops on Main Street. Ellery continues to follow this story for us. She's live in Edina this morning. Ellery, how did it go on day one? Yeah, so Chris, it seems to be going pretty well from the stores that we've talked to over the last day. Uh, but things in general are reopening slowly across Minnesota. For example, here at 50th and France, some of the stores are back open, not all of them. But the ones that are open, you know, it is a big adjustment for them, allowing people back inside with those restrictions. So yesterday, for example, our team went to the store Gather, and they saw a steady stream of customers. But it's the first time it's been opened in two months, so it's an adjustment with staff wearing masks, encouraging social distancing, and the checkout counters have that plexiglass in them. Today, the Arthur Murray Dance Studio, also near Dinah, will reopen, and they're changing things up as they offer no touch lessons. We're calling it the new normal, and that just feels uh, in a good place to be. We have some students that have been just chomping at the bit to be able to get back in. Some malls are back open in the metro, like Rosedale, Ridgedale, Burnsville, and the Galleria. Those places drew small crowds yesterday, and they too have their own safety measures in place. And not all of their stores are open at this time, but they will in the coming weeks. As a reported, Mall of America will not reopen until June 1st. And that's just one example of how some stores across the state are waiting it out. They're not rushing to reopen because they want to feel safe and allowing customers back and making sure their places are all cleaned up. And they also want the customers to feel uh, safe coming back to their stores as well. Chris? Yeah, everyone's got to do this on their own time when they feel safe. Thanks a lot, Ellery. Well, now it's one of the most talked about stories on our Carolyn Facebook page this morning in our digital dive. Nearly 500 of you commenting on this one. Casinos in Minnesota are getting back open. Yeah, in fact, Prairie's Edge Casino out of Granite Falls is already open today. So Mystic Lake and Little Six Casinos say they're going to be reopening the next week with some changes in place. All guests and staff will be required to wear face masks and have their temperature taken. There's also a limit on how many people can be inside the casino at a time, and about half the chairs on the casino's floor have been removed to increase spacing. D Treasure Island and Grand Casinos also announced that they'll be adopting similar rules. However, they didn't say when they plan to reopen. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of people fired up in the comment section on this story. A lot of you frustrated, including Ken here. He says casinos and Minnesota's largest candy store can reopen, but not restaurants, churches, and bars. Makes no sense at all. And Marie is concerned about the average age of people inside of a casino, stereotypically older crowds who may be a higher risk for contracting COVID-19. 
Tiffany says she can't wait to go back. Quote, not everyone lives in fear. So Tiffany will be at the casino once it's back open. And Heather pointing out casinos are Native American owned and are not forced to close by the state. They're closed voluntarily and came up with safety plans and are now reopening. And so Gia, of course, as casinos start to reopen, we, we might see it increase, we might not. Who knows, it's one of those things where the governor wall says he's going to have to take a look at, you know, as businesses do start to reopen in the weeks to come. Yeah, and I got to say, I got to agree with Heather. I mean, they're a sovereign nation. They don't have to follow the rules, but they are taking um, all the measures and, you know, following all the guidelines that they should be. Alicia, thank you. Let's talk about the two week average uh, since we're talking about opening up or loosening restrictions. So how could that play a major role? Well, in this chart here, the new cases, uh, the blue bars right here, about 700 uh, in the last couple of days. And we're looking at this dotted line, though, that's this 14 day average that we've been showing you. It's important because we need to see a flattening of this line or a decrease in this line, and we should see at least a two week period of a plateau or decrease before opening up, according to the nation's top health experts. Well, last week, take a look at this on May 12th, we did see that it was flattening or maybe plateauing and maybe even decreasing, and we said, hey, be on the lookout for that, uh, but don't take it too seriously because then a couple day later, days later on the 15th, we saw it go up once again, and it's important to remember this average is not what is happening down now. This average is uh, what our average was two weeks ago. So what this is telling us this dotted line, it means that the uptick means that this was before the stay safe Minnesota order. So what does this mean for this line now that some places are open? Well, an increase in the dotted line once the averages for this time show up. Maybe, maybe not. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. But remember, the governor has said he will dial it back on that order if need be. And we're tracking developments this morning in the fight against COVID-19. So let's get you caught up. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers is washing his hands of the restrictions he put in place to slow the spread of the virus. It comes days after the state Supreme Court ruled he abused his power by extending the state safer at home order. He's now leaving social distancing rules up to local officials. President Trump says he's taking hydroxychloroquine as a preventative measure against the virus. The drug is typically used to treat malaria. There is a lack of evidence that the drug helps against coronavirus, and research shows potentially dangerous side effects. And today, the Senate Banking Committee hears from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. It's trying to figure out whether the $2 billion spent so far on the economy is working. Democrats are calling for $3 billion more. Let's go now to Tracy for our One Thing Weather. Well, we're dealing with some clouds still here in the metro, but we're expecting to get up to 70 degrees, staying dry and even warmer for Wednesday. And we're tracking this crash uh, along 55 westbound at 35W, just east of downtown Minneapolis. Looks like this crash is getting on the back of the tow bed as we speak, so it should clear here relatively soon. Another crash also along 94 as you travel towards Rogers is causing a little bit of a slowdown there. It is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and we're celebrating by sharing stories from our community. Today, a senior in high school is somehow finding time to finish up her classes remotely, hold down a job, do some extracurricular activities, and help out others during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's how. Mounds View High School senior Meryl Wang's life before the pandemic, school, hanging out with friends, interning, gymnastics events, and more. It was definitely really disappointing at first. Um, just to feel like we've waited for four years of high school and um, all this is kind of taken away. Now that she has some extra time on her hands, she noticed her mom was busy too. I didn't really know that there were volunteers making masks until I saw my mom bring home like a huge pile of cloth. Her mom was working with volunteers in the Chinese community to make masks. The problem was many of them didn't really know how to make one. I've had an interest in making videos. Like Enter another inexperienced sewer, Meryl, but who also enjoys editing video. Just to break down the steps into something that people can easily follow so that everyone can help. To create a DIY video to make masks at home. When I made the video, I was just planning to like send it to a couple of my friends. And then it ended up being shared um, with my mom's friend group. And so it got spread further than I thought it would. And so I'm really proud of that. Shared so much, she and the volunteers have made hundreds, if not thousands by now, and sent them off. So we've got a little PPE station here set up 
to clinics, hospitals, and others in need. So while part of her senior experience was taken, she's been able to give something back. When I look back on this, I can remember that I learned a new skill and I also was able to help during this time. And Meryl is heading to the U of M in the fall. She plans to major in chemical engineering. And Chris, she's a great kid. And she says that she and her mom and then her younger sister have like this assembly line at home on the weekends <laughs> when they make all these masks. That's a good way to get the family yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a post that's been shared thousands of times claiming meat packing employees have a higher rate of coronavirus infection than healthcare workers. Our verified team says it's not true. We explain why. Then we show you what it's like to fight on the front line during a pandemic. A rare look at the daily life of a Minnesota nurse. And as things start to reopen, are you planning to take your family out and resume your normal routine? We hear from two moms with very different views.